Welcome back to 316 Soccer Show. Coming to you live here from Emerson Biggins West, Peter Espinosa, Cliff Brown, and Blake Shoemaker. And now joining us, another Wichita Wings player, midfielder, Brian Perez. Brian, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, okay, so now you're born in Costa Rica. You came here when you were 11 or 12. Take us through your playing days as a youth in Costa Rica, and then when you moved to Miami, just all the teams you played for and your experience coming, uh, coming to the United States. Well, in Costa Rica, I was with a team in Saprisa, and I was actually in the school. My grandma put me there to school with my uncle. He was the same age as me. And we were there for a couple of years since we were like seven years old, and that's when I really started like loving soccer. That's honestly because a lot of the adults from Saprisa will come and, and talk to us and encourage us and and it was great. That's that's when I actually my mom decided after three years to move to Miami for better opportunities when I was 11 or 12. And that's when I really didn't know many people there. So I for six months, I was honestly without soccer. I was skating, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and I met uh, Victor, actual coach for Miami FC when I was in Miami FC. I met Victor. And he put me on a traveling team. And that's where I was at for a couple of years, Renegades and West Kendo. And then, <coughs> so, how, why, why did you come to UMKC? He was a four-year um, player at the UMKC, a kangaroo. Mm -hmm. uh, what, how did that recruiting process start? What made you decide to come to the, to the Midwest? Well, there was a lot of tournaments that we had in Disney Showcase and stuff like that. And... and a couple of schools were talking to me and and because of my grades i had a couple of schools just kind of folded on me and victor was actually he knew the coach of umkc coach Benben, and he was good friends with him and he he told me that he was a great coach as far as as a coach and as a person so i i just kind of thought that you know like i'll give it a shot you know if and not only that a couple of my friends went also there so i would not go there by myself because a lot of people went there by themselves, like SMU and stuff like that, and they felt like homesick. So I thought I thought that was a good decision. And I can tell you, I, I had Rick, Rick Benben for a coach as well when I played for Kansas City Comets. Oh. He was a goalkeeper coach up there. And he was a great guy, really cared about his work, was really committed to the uh, youth soccer as well in the area, and just really a great man. I could see he'd be a great person to play for in college as well. And I've, I've, I've kept touch a little bit with him over the years. So, yeah, he's a great, great person. Great. Person. Oh, yeah. And, and the college showcases are big. You got to realize we go around and we, we attend. The Disney Showcase is one of the biggest ones. Yeah, Disney. And Disney. that's where we go. We, we look for players. And obviously, Rick, either Rick or, or his recruiting staff maybe saw you down there. Yeah, that's, that's actually when they saw me, um, one of the showcases, and, and talked to Victor and told me about it. And I was actually going to stay in Miami at FIU, but he thought that, if I go to UMKC, I'll have a better career there since um, since the coaches and stuff like that, since Coach Benben was, you know, like he really cared about the players and he took care of them and as far as all that stuff. So ended up being a good, good deal. And he played four years there, had a very good career, and then after that began the process of trying to, trying to play professionally. You played for the Des Moines Minnesota PDL team, mm -hmm. and then you went to back to Miami to play for Miami FC, where you actually played with another one of your teammates now, yeah. Daniel Villegas. Was there any other teams I'm missing that you played for in between uh, finding your way to the Comets last year and then the Wings this year? No. I mean, I just I went to a couple of tryouts. Um, one big tryout that I had, it was in Chile, in Cobreloa, and that was, that was huge for me because not only because – I knew it was going to be hard making it, but it was just experience there for a week, a week and a half, what I had, you know, a South American team and their and their habits and just how they, they practice, how they slept, how they lived. It was just great. You know, it was just a great experience. And actually, I, I talked to the coach and he was, you know, he he really liked me. But, I mean, for me to make it there, it was just, it was unrealistic because I was a a, a foreigner. So you know how. Huh? So after um, you, were, you were with the Missouri Comets last year, and then you came to Wichita this year, of course. I know you spent four years mm -hmm. at UMKC. Did you ever make a trip to Wichita? Had you been to Wichita before you signed with us? Never. Never. I probably saw Wichita on the, you know, like on the boards where UMKC is at. But yeah, the highway. I, yeah, on the highway. Wichita, Wichita this way, I thirty five south. Yeah, that. But I never 
I mean, when they say Wichita, I would think of, you know, like just farms and yeah, but that's it's not as bad as I thought. You know? <laughs> no, that, I mean, that, uh, to be honest, that's what a lot of people well, hey, think I, we are. I had a worse impression. I was telling them early, in, in one of the earlier uh, segments we've done, earlier episodes, when I played for Cleveland, which isn't a lot of people wouldn't think is a great area. I came out of Seattle. When I played for Cleveland, we used to come to play Wichita, mm -hmm. and I used to say, thank goodness I don't live here, because then it was a little bit different of a, a Yo, city. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, Kellogg was a, just a very much smaller road with stoplights along it. There wasn't Emerson Biggins West wasn't right. No, well, either. nothing this was, was farm. Out. This, yeah. was, this was farm Anything land Anything past time. West oh. Street was farm Yeah, land. pretty much, pretty much. And it was a very, very different community back then. But it's grown a lot, and I've made my home here for a long time. And I think it's, it's a really nice community. Well, I had, a couple, soccer. I had a couple of friends from the Comets, you know, grew, growing up, even actually from Florida, that went to play um, against us in the arena. And, I mean, you know, if you go to the arena, the, around there is nothing. There's just playing out and they're like what do you do here i'm like actually this there's another side that is actually <laughs> pretty nice and and i mean you these people are really nice here and and the city is i mean i for sure for sure it was kill my expectations and do you feel like that's because of not only because wichita is not that bad just also because of the group of guys that are that have all signed and come together with the wings it's a good group oh yeah i mean definitely definitely because you know the hispanics that we have and the 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 guys that we actually have i was telling actually a friend of mine yesterday that we actually we have a good group i mean the, there's other teams that have little groups you know the brazilians they have the the americans but i mean everybody gets along here and nobody has problems with anybody so that's really hard to find you know when especially when you're in a professional environment everybody's absolutely. on their own absolutely it's all, it, difficulty on a lot of teams yeah so to have a great team culture really adds i think to what we've talked about the way they've been able to stay in these games with teams like milwaukee because they do have that culture and that carries over on the field and they fight for each other and i think that makes a big big difference yeah. when the game is on the line i mean that I, for me that's what i've been telling everyone that's that i mean we probably don't have the most talented team but we have everybody working for each other and it's not selfish you know you someone will lay out wait, lay off the bots someone to score instead of like them scoring and having more points you know so i feel like that's 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 why we're gonna i feel like there's no doubt we're gonna get there you know not maybe this year but definitely in a couple of years you know and you guys are very close the past three milwaukee games you've been in all of them um <laughs> the thursday game you got to talk about it a little bit of through the many skirmishes, you were kind of involved. Just take us through a little bit after the Eddie Wor after Eddie Worley got fouled, Terminacy came over. He was upset. What was what exactly was going on in there? Just just you know just just so we have a little bit of insight. Well, I mean, it started out of nothing. I thought. I mean, it, I just I was actually talking to the referee, talking about like giving him a blue card or something like that. Just kind of making it, you know, a little like talking to the ref. And Terminacy was like telling me to be quiet and be quiet and I was like I'm not even talking to you what's wrong with you and as soon as I said that he got to my face and when he got to my face I don't know it was just in the moment that I just threw the sedan <laughs> <head button. laughs> but, but he's, he's clearly an easily angered player but I mean he was going nuts well he, I mean, he oh yeah well, I, that was after after you he also caught yeah, an open hand, hand or a closed hand yeah, right then, to I the mean, chin. His, his and I, up, up to, to be face. honest with you, I wasn't really trying to hurt him. I was just trying to get him off me. I right. mean, yeah, he had his right. hand I in was just, face. Yeah, that's well, I spoke with, with Romano Rossi, the referee. Uh, I gave him a chance to calm down. They had a tough game with you guys, obviously. And he didn't even call it a headbutt. He called it a dog nudge. You're like a oh, dog, dog nudge. nudge. <laughs> you know, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I talked to The Perez he, dog nudge is what we've named it. Saucer dog nudge. So he didn't even see it as a headbutt, to be honest. You just... You yourself just called it a headbutt. You gave him the Zidane. Uh, Hermano's, Rossi's interpretation was very, very different. The video it. shows next to no movement from Brian on that uh -huh. as well. I mean, you barely moved. Yeah. Even though you may have had the intent to kind of back him up, it wasn't much. But you can clearly see he did make – he struck you and made quite a bit of contact I mean, with you. I mean, the referee, thank God, he knew, you know, like he'd been refereeing since I was in college. And he knew that I'm not like that. I'm not mm -hmm. no one to hurt someone or – or just wish anything on nobody, you know, like that or nobody. Because easily you could have been thrown out for that as well. Oh, absolutely. You I know mean, that. And so the way I think, we, I mean, had it have been worse, had it have been, you know, more malicious, but clearly it wasn't. Well, and I think I think it goes back to what you're saying. 
Rossi knows who you are. Mm-hmm. He knows he knows the local player. He knows players all over the country. He referees yeah. all over the place. He knew the but intent wasn't there. And, and he knows the type of player you are. And I think he gives you a bit of the doubt. But I'll tell you something else that they're going to do in this league. They also give the home team a little bit of benefit of the doubt because out of both those skirmishes where it could have easily been three on three. Which talk came out four on three in both of them. We got, talked about that. And, How and many that, times have that you wasn't, seen? That wasn't to our disadvantage to by any means. Oh, no. How many times you've been in the league a couple of years now? How many times is there one 4v3 in a game, let alone two? Two 4v3 I mean, situations. That happens like once or twice in the whole season, I would yeah. think. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to well, find. It's hard, guys. Anything else for Brian before we let him go? No, just, uh, you know, talk to LeBaron, quote LeBaron. He said, Brian's playing up to the star level that you're capable of. So he came to you when, when Chili was off the team. Uh, Chili got released. He came to you and said, hey, it's time to, time to do your thing, you know, and you already knew that anyway. You've, you, you didn't get as many minutes with Missouri. Kim was a new coach. You come to Wichita, LeBaron's a new coach, and you're finding your way, but you're absolutely impacting the game. And, you know, not just not just looking to score yourself. The majority of your shots are on target, which is a is is part of your game. You look at UMKC when when Brian was at UMKC. Not only did he lead him in scoring minutes, but he led him in shots on goal, which says a lot about a player too. You're leading scorer, shots on target, makes sense. I'm just glad he's passing because he gave it to one of my guys with a Brian yeah, Brian so, goal. So that we he, talked he's, about so yeah. shot fake. Brian Cushing Cush- holds that. three guys with the shot fake. Mm-hmm. Play it square to Cushing. Cushing finishes and. We get to see, uh, hopefully on video, you know, uh, Brian Cushing's uh, celebration. 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 Famous celebration. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It keeps it's the great. fans coming back. As all, as well. Oh, yeah. All like the kisses say, keep and it stuff. Up, keep it up. Get some more wins for us, especially this weekend, February 4th. It's Newman night. And my guys, are gonna be, my guys <laughs> oh. are gonna be out on the field at halftime, so I expect a big performance. I noticed you didn't bring no this doubt. up when Kevin was up here a little bit. <laughs> no, he's a friend's guy. I'm not yeah. gonna bring up Newman okay. Knight. So, but, but, but you I did say there was a match. Uh, uh, one of the last couple matches, you said, "Hey, everybody from uh, two Newman guys and two friends guys got points tonight." I had points. And, I think, yeah. It, well, that's big to me because you got the local players that are stepping up and having an impact, and I think yeah. that's really important. Yeah, it helps bring the fans back. But it's just exciting to me because. Watching these kids develop, I've watched Kevin play all the way through youth soccer as well. Watching Mosley play, watching him play in college, and now seeing him compete compete on the professional level, I think it's fantastic. All right, Brian Perez, Wichita Wings midfielder. We thank him, Brian. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, we'll take one more break, and we'll be right back with our final segment of the Three One Six Soccer Show here from Emerson Biggins West. <laughs> <laughs> 